one of the things that the reptilians also do to women is they, like I said before, they strive to create as much pain and anguish within the people. Uh, this could be for male abductees as well. A very common tactic that the reptilians do is they contrive to create a lower back injury. And what this does is it, it, it causes that abductee to not only feel physical anguish and physical pain, but emit that energy, uh, emit emotions and energy of suffering, of pain, anguish, and hopelessness. They, what the reptilians do is they develop strongholds within us. One inevitable byproduct of, of a lot of these experiences is the abductee will resort to self-medication. I can speak from experience because when I was in high school, I had a lot of abduction experiences. And I know if I had a choice of laying there in bed, and when I was a kid it was extreme, I'd be, be laying beneath a veritable mountain of, of pillows and, and blankets and stuff with the lights turned on, okay, because I was scared. I didn't know why I was scared. But as I got older uh, in high school, I still didn't realize what was going on, although I was having a lot of experiences. But I knew that if I had a choice of laying in bed, frightened uh, at some nameless fear, or getting drunk and laying there in the room spitting around, I always usually opted for the latter. I'd rather <laughs> get buzzed out and not worry about it. So addictions, uh, you know, people shouldn't be judged on the fact that they resort to self-medication. It's only because they don't know what's happening or it's a, it's a stress reliever. The reptilians strive to create compulsive behaviors within us. Uh, they strive to create uh, self-destructive behaviors with us, whether it's addictions, compulsive behaviors, uh, other self-destructive activities, uh, sexual addictions, whatever the case may be. Because all of these things can be utilized by the reptilian to control the person. Isolation and the feelings of isolation is a very effective control mechanism that the reptilians uh, and aliens in general utilize on people. For example, if a woman is having these experiences, but her husband or her significant other is extremely negative about the subject, that tends to make the woman feel even more isolated, even more helpless, even more alone. The ETs and the reptilians will literally manipulate and program her spouse or significant other to uh, even become agitated or angry when the subject comes up. So the end result of that is it, it pulls out uh, one possible source of emotional support uh, for the woman undergoing these experiences. And you know we can see the opposite happening with, with males going through experiences and, and the people around them being extremely negative. I was once punched out by my ex-brother-in-law, who um, I believe, I call him a closet case abductee, just based on the experiences he's had and the things he's described to me. I know he's had abductions, but uh, one time, I guess I, I punched one of his wrong buttons, bringing the subject up, because he just hauled off and slugged me, and we got into a good fight. But that's, that's just an example you know, of, um, of a control mechanism. And one thing that you should also realize, too, is as abductees, and I know I'm talking to some of you in the audience, certain types of programming is instilled within, within many abductees to make them uh, become agitated when they hear this information, to make them fall asleep or become sleepy or drowsy. Many times I've been giving lectures and I look over and someone's just conked out because, um, because the information is such that it triggers uh, a built-in response for the person to fall asleep so they don't hear the information. Other uh, trigger mechanisms are uh, becoming agitated. Uh, suddenly the overwhelming compulsion to get up and smoke a cigarette, uh, the overwhelming compulsion to get up and simply leave. All of these things help to keep that abductee isolated and uh, ignorant of information that may help them. One of the more controversial aspects of the reptilian uh, abduction agenda is what is known as the crank program. The ETs and the reptilians create certain programs 
there's what's been described as the Palladian New Age la da program where you come across blonde-haired women who believe that they're Palladian hybrid walk-ins, but they're really just having horrendous reptilian experiences, but, but they don't realize it because the programming and manipulation is such that they only are allowed to remember um, pleasant experiences, feel-good experiences. Uh, then there are other programs, such as the Crank program. The foremost pioneer in this facet of the reptilian research is my mentor, Barbara Bartholik. Now, most of you are familiar with the problem of crystal meth, also and a derivative known as crank. But many of you may not realize that it is part and parcel of the reptilian abduction agenda. Uh, a colleague of mine I haven't spoken to in a long time is a guy named George Andrews. And he wrote, uh, he put together, compiled a book uh, called Drugs and Magic, which uh, is a synopsis of shamanic uh, practices around the world, different cultures, where dr drugs are utilized in order to uh, expand one's consciousness and to be able to interact and commune with non-human beings, very often interdimensional beings, but sometimes uh, more corporeal beings. Drugs and Magic, if you can find that book, uh, please get it. What the reptilians have done is, through their control of the rep human reptilian hybrids here on the surface, they have created this crank crystal meth pandemic. The reptilians resonate at a sympathetic frequency with crystal meth and crank. If you've studied the, the police blotters and, and the crime histories of people who are on crystal meth and crank, you will find certain commonalities. One, they are prone to like mayhem and berserk, uh, sadistic, violent behavior. If you really peer closely, you'll find that many crank users uh, are into uh, perverse, um, outrageous sexual practices, including pedophilism and what have you. Because what the crank and crystal meth does is it affects the, the brain chemistry of the, of the person using the drug. Now, I should mention that many people that are reptilian hybrids or hosts have a genetic predisposition to hosting or, be, or because of the long-term genetic manipulation. But someone who is a crank user or a crystal meth user needn't have that genetic predisposition. Uh, crank use is a fast track to getting possessed, not only by reptilians, but by demonic entities in general. What... Uh, the, the spouses and the significant others, the girlfriends of, of crank users have described is that when their husband or their boyfriend goes into a crank-induced rage, literally sometimes they're like a reptilian lizard-like um, image just suddenly comes over their face, like overshadows their face. Sometimes their, their pupils go vertical. Uh, sometimes it manifests in, in other ways, such as uh, a fascination, uh, with more perverse, kinky sex, for example. My mentor, Barbara Barthwick, had spoken to a, a headhunter uh, in the semiconductor industry in Silicon Valley. This guy was a computer scientist, and his job was to recruit uh, software engineers, software designers in Silicon Valley. As such, he was privy to all kinds of interesting information, including plans to microchip the entire population, but that's another story. <laughs> what this guy experienced from prolonged crank use was that, and he was an extremely sharp individual. I listened to the audio tape of, of Barbara's uh, interview with him. What he described is it got to the point where his paranoia uh, was such that the, the ETs and the reptilians no longer bothered to conceal themselves. They would like flit in and out of reality constantly at all times. Uh, it could be at home, it could be driving his car, it could be at the workplace. They would just pop up because, like I said, the reptilians have a sympathetic frequency to, to the drug crank and crystal methadrine. Long-term users begin to resonate at that frequency, and it allows the entities to what I call interface with that person. And, and as time goes on, uh, this guy, I think his name was Chris, he began having more and more perverse thoughts. It got to the point where the moment he got home from work in the Silicon Valley job, he would get, he would get right 
uh, online onto the computer and start going to the child pornography sites. He, he couldn't help it. And uh, he realized that he had a problem. And the reason he 